touch on mental disorders, and, uh, and then we're getting close to, to being done with my part. So everybody knows you can get psychotic with cannabis at times, toxic psychosis. But th what we're really interested in is the risk of uh, adult psychosis. So it's pretty clear that marijuana in at-risk individuals increases the risk of, of schizophrenia and psychosis. And it depends on your genotype, interestingly. These are different genes. Uh, um, and they showed that if you have this gene, it doesn't seem to increase your risk much. But if you have a certain genetic profile, it increases your risk of getting, schizo of, uh, getting schizophrenia or a psychotic disorder significantly. So only certain individuals are at risk. Now, given how devastating schizophrenia is, that's worth paying attention to. But most kids aren't going to get schizophrenia. But if you're at risk and you use cannabis, then you increase your risk. And this is why, uh, why it's worth paying attention to. So Nora, in her review, said marijuana is associated with an increased risk of schizophrenia, it advances the time of first psychosis by two to six years. And the data for depression and anxiety is not quite so good. And I'm just going to skip through this, but just to say, although we think marijuana causes depression, it's not exactly clear. The research says the daily cannabis use appears to increase the risk of an anxiety disorder by about uh, uh, double. So I'm not going to summarize that, but it about doubles the risk of an anxiety disorder. Depression is not quite so clear. And then we always wonder if it can cause relapse, but I'm going to skip over this. The evidence for the gateway drug, this has been talked about, right, is not really robust. It's hard to, to prove that, that uh, smoking marijuana causes. Um, speaking of gateways, uh, uh, this says, Moses, meet Steve. He's going to upgrade your tablets. This is to remind us about a gateway. So the idea is, is that marijuana makes people more vulnerable to uh, use of other drugs. <clears throat> I don't think, uh, Steve Jobs, actually, anybody read his biography? Steve, he, he used a lot of drugs. He was a big proponent of hallucinogens. Um, he's actually the kind of guy that, you know, if, I, I always think he could have been in our office. He had these temporal, I mean, the guy was really off the wall. Thank goodness for him, though, because, you know, without some of the... Let me, so let me, let me tell you, just go into this research just a minute. Nick, what's the, what's the answer to this question? Most heroin addicts have used M prior to using heroin. What's your question? Okay, so this is the question, right? So I go ask a bunch of marijuana, uh, heroin users, marijuana, and yes, the, a lot of them use marijuana. The problem with that argument, marijuana, but it could all, you could also put milk there. Now, does using milk cause heroin uh, addiction? It doesn't. So it gets a little tricky. This is a logical fallacy called post hoc ergo propter hoc, which is because something comes after something, it caused that thing. You know, I got up this morning, the sun came up, but those aren't related. So it's kind of hard to prove that marijuana is a gateway drug. But, there are, but if it is, there are some mechanisms. It's possible that marijuana decreases the reactivity of those dopamine neurons so that you want the, the bump from other drugs. Cannabis users are exposed to drug-enriched environments. And then people who use cannabis have personality traits like risk-taking and sensation-seeking that are, but those are unrelated to cannabis. So the gateway is still a question. Um, I, I, I don't uh, think the science is quite so good for that. Although there's twin studies. These are 234 pairs, one of whom used cannabis and one of whom didn't. And what you can show is that the one who used cannabis had a higher risk of addiction to all of these drugs. So that's decent data. Because if you're identical twins, your genes are the same, and then this person used cannabis and this one didn't, and then the risk of addiction in this group was higher than this group. So that's what the data for the gateway drug is. And I'm going to skip some of these slides just out of use of time. We're going to close up with this image, which is the fog image. So I've presented some science in five realms, driving, dependence, underachievement, mental illness. And then we talked a little bit about bad to worse, which is gateway, to make the point that, uh, that uh, marijuana has a fog-like atmosphere and has the potential to really cloud achievement and things in young people. And it sneaks in, right? It kind of sneaks in on you on these little cat feet that Carl Sandburg said. And it doesn't sneak in in advertising. God, you, anybody flip through the reader? You can get cannabis delivered to your door. Anybody seen that? It's spectacular. Like you text so-and-so, you get it. It's, it's just remarkable. And this is my fear, is that the, you know, we're, we're fighting a tide where people are going to be trying to make money on this deal, or, and already are, obviously. So that's what we're fighting. And it's a societal denial. You know, my favorite part of, about this picture is Oprah just looks so serious, doesn't she? Like she's believing the whole deal. But everybody, this is a program thing, right? Didn't even notice I am lying. 
people who say that marijuana is not, has no harms and it can't, doesn't have a dependency syndrome are just in denial. They're just under-informed about the research. Um, and that's, it's okay to be in denial, but it's just good to say, call it what it is. So we reviewed marijuana has dependence effects, driving effects, underachievement, broad range, increases the risk of certain mental illnesses, and then there's a question of the gateway effect. And this is just a summary of what we talked about. What can we do, and then I'm going to ask Nick to come up and, and riff on what I said. We've got to protect young individuals because age of onset matters. These large studies showed the adverse effects of marijuana were worse if you started before age 18. So I would just hammer that home. And I would tell parents, it's not true that it's, that it's uh, harmless. People who are at risk of psychosis, or people who are at risk of addiction need to be warned. This is, can be an addictive drug. And we should use motivational interviewing and not the reefer madness <laughs> motif, right? Try to scare people. Because 90% 90, 90 of people don't get addicted. So you've got to talk to people from a motivation interviewing standpoint. And we should treat cannabis dependence and cannabis withdrawal, which Nick is going to talk about, because helping people with withdrawal helps.